Hello Bicycles! Welcome back to another day in Minecraft. Here is that mining. And maybe I should go a bit into detail. Today we are more than 70 episodes in this series. And the no mining premise is basically cannot mine any blocks that are generated um, naturally or uh, as kind of, of a farm. So that means I have to get creative. And so far we completed phase one of this series, which was uh, just barely get the minimum uh, settled. Um, so uh, we can build up on phase two, which is basically the result that you can uh, see all around myself here with various farms, uh, trading hall for villagers, uh, furnace array, uh, dirt farm back there, uh, then Two towers for different uh, uh, crops and goods and whatnot. Then wood farm, wood farm, more wood farm, bone mill farm, cobble farm, and iron farm. And above there, the centerpiece, the storage and sorting system. So now going into the third phase, uh, this is a bit of a mixed thing. What we will see is quality of life update. So for example, up there, you can see a lot of colorful blocks going around and around. And that's because all the chests are full. And that's one of the first projects that I will would like to tackle um, figuring out a way uh, to basically shut the uh, uh, wool farm over there off if we have enough wool of any type. Um, we need to see how that works. But then we also will have uh, different things like, uh, as you can see, our farms, they are just bare uh, and they just work, but they are not looking good. So that's also something I want to tackle. Maybe also have uh, some different uh, uh, furnace array because uh, the one here uh, is uh, powered with uh, blaze rods uh, which means if we have a low quantity of uh, things we want to smelt uh, it's a bit of a waste uh, but we will see uh, to that then we might see some uh, chunk loader um, to basically ensure our setup working more smoothly. And the far off goal is actually something like a quarry. So we can get uh, to all the blocks that we cannot mine uh, and we cannot uh, produce a farm for it like diorite, andesite, um, granite, and so on. Uh, so this part will also be a bit more uh, uh, focused on innovation, uh, where in the past we built some uh, farms, smaller ones, larger ones, but basically all uh, out of uh, an existing concept, uh, mostly uh, out of uh, a tutorial from YouTube. 
and here we want to get a bit creative and uh, come up with our own solutions. So let's tackle this colorful mess there first. We want to figure out when all our chests are full of wool. And the easiest thing is to detect that if uh, there is something in the hopper behind the chest, then the chest of course has to be full. And as we have 16 colors, we have to basically ensure that we only get a positive signal out if all chests or all hoppers have something in here. And what we have here, that's a typical and gate you can see the two torches if both these torches are lit then the output torch is not basically uh, we don't have a positive signal here um, and the uh, input is fed here by comparators so if we put something in here We'll see this torch turns off. However, that torch is still off because that torch is still lit. So if we add something there, both torches are off. This one is lit. So this is a simple design for uh, two inputs but we can also do it for more and there it's just a bit more complicated uh, because we have to do it a bit wider and have it like this so the redstone is one out and as you can see, middle torch lit, this one is not. And uh, if I can get something in here, then we have this one lit. So this works out nicely because we can place that side by side. Uh, the only trouble that we have here is a bit of a space constraint because we cannot uh, directly or actually we are taking the signal out of the of the chest which is not that good because then we have to factor in uh, signal strengths so we should come up with a different solution. Initially, I thought we could take the signal uh, with this setup, uh, basically block compared to block compared to that uh, maintains the signal strength. But back here, uh, you can see that one has a power of 15. Uh, and actually what we want is a power of one I mean we could take that one and somehow reduce it to one but I think uh, then it really is an issue with uh, tileable input so maybe uh, what I'm thinking is we could load the chests down here one lower and then have hoppers behind them so basically the chests become the floor down here in the middle lane all the chests here on this side are lowered and also color coordinated so no more rummaging through chests to find the right color and then uh, we take the signal from this hopper here through block compared to block compared to, uh, 
um, back to this torch row here and as you can see all torches are off which means all chests are full and then here we have the output signal so if this torch is lit uh, powering this line here means all 16 wool chests are full and we can turn the farm off and how can we achieve that that's quite simple we just have to prevent this redstone block from blinking because the powering unpowering powers this uh, dispenser here for the shears so without that uh, the sheep will still feed on the grass um, and uh, um, but they will no longer be sheared uh, so no more wool going into our system which is what we want and the easiest way to achieve the non-blinking is basically just put a redstone block right there behind it so the redstone is always powered and this is the contraption that can do that for us the redstone block uh, here in this position um, is the turned off state and only if it is moved one block forward it should touch the the redstone uh, dust there uh, and there be thereby disabling the whole thing and uh, this is done with the piston and it's a little bit of a weird setup because uh, the redstone block can butt power the piston and we want to avoid that that's why it's one out and one up and with an observer back here we basically can detect the change of the redstone signal so if it becomes powered then it is uh, getting pushed forward but if we take out some wool there that would change the output signal back there uh, and it would switch so we would want to get more wool in to fill back up so uh, when the wire when the power disappears it is triggered again so all that remains is pulling that signal over to there uh, having this contraption uh, on all the layers and um, then hooking everything up due to space constraints i changed the layout a bit and have the observer now below the piston because here in the back uh, we would have the redstone that triggers uh, the observer right next to that one which is not a good idea and that way we basically can snake the redstone line here up all the way to our topmost layer as you can see uh, I have removed the slime in front of the piston so that uh, the piston can fire away as long as we are building this thing up uh, without interfering uh, in any of uh, uh, these blocks being pushed because in the end uh, we basically then want to have the redstone blocks over there on all layers so uh, while placing removing and doing things uh, it can happen that it's moved forward uh, back and uh, we end up with uh, inconsistent state so that's why I place these blocks in last and then we make sure that the whole thing fires once the redstone line up there is chunky in places but as long as it does the job who is to uh, 
moon this uh, this thing so let's put in the uh, slime blocks and then place the redstone which basically pushes everything forward now the next layer up there i cannot access directly so i have to circumvent here um there you can see um there we had to have a way around the thing so that we are not powering the piston directly and if we're placing this one here that's all good then here we have another one slime block piston and we have a bad powering going on there which means um we need some half slap action up there somewhere found the two culprit blocks and replaced them with half slabs uh, already have the redstone wire on top so now we can place again the slime and there we go piston does not stay extended and then the last one up here that's the most simple one just like that so that's all our blocks pushed out so we no longer are producing uh, wool and if we would cut this line we can see all the blocks are retracted and the wool form is enabled again but for now let's turn it off as defined by all our full chests and with that we are already at the end of this next episode uh, the third phase of uh, uh, this challenge and if you want to find out what's more in stock for me don't forget to subscribe like this video if you made it this far and i will see you soon in the next one until then goodbye